<clears throat> what up, UFC T dot <clears throat> UFC T dot breakdowns. Uh, UFC two seventy five. Uh, Tashira versus Prohashka. Uh, we had some canceled fights right off the bat. Robert Whitaker, Martin Vittori, Jerio Baturn versus Manel Camp, and uh, Mike Mathia versus Oran Kosick. Kosish? Uh -huh. Say Orion. Kos, Kos, Kosch? I don't know. Just um, forewarning, I have a kitten on my lap that is. Um, won't leave me alone right now. She's climbing on me a second ago. Anyways, um, it was a good card. Some good fights on this card. Um, first up, we had Ramona Pasquale versus uh, Jocelyn Edwards. Um, both good fighters. That Ramona Pascal is tough. She's like some rugby player or something. She's tough, but uh, Edwards was really good on the feet. Um, lengthy, good kicks. Um, that was a good fight. They were both, they brought it. Um, it was a really good fight. The first fight of the early prelims, um, Edwards won by decision. Um, we had uh, Na Liang versus uh, Silviana Gomez Warriors. And Gomez Wars, I remember her in her last fight. Like, she got hands. She lost, but I just remember she had hands. And, like, it showed in this fight. Um, got the straight-up K all at 115 pounds. That's, like, doesn't happen so often. Um, next up, we had uh, Dana versus Kang. Dana is, like, he hits so hard. He's one of those guys, those, like, Mongolian-ish guy. I don't know if they're exactly Mongolian but they're like from there. It's a few of them in the UFC and all of them hit like, they hit like trucks. Anyways, um, Kong, nickname Mr. Perfect, he's a South Korean guy. Um, he's a really good fighter, like just skilled, but uh, he doesn't always put it together. I feel like he did this time. Denon straight up tried to throw an illegal knee. Um, luckily he didn't hit him with it. He also was throwing late punches after almost every round. Like that Denon dude, like, I don't know if he had some hearing problems or if he don't know how to turn it off, but like he didn't get it under control. Uh, Kong won that fight by decision. Um, next up, we had uh, Jer Jared Allen versus, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Brendan Allen. Jared Allen. We had Brendan Allen versus uh, Jacob Malcoon. Malcoon. Um, Brendan Allen won that fight uh, by decision. It was, uh, it was a grueling match, and they were both just... Uh, Brennan and I was much better on the feet. Uh, he won by decision. Um, next up, we had... Uh, Haysier Machate versus Steve Garcia. That Machate dude, man. Like, crazy, crazy. It was like a Rocky fight, first of all. Both of them were just punching each other in the face until one couldn't stand up anymore. Um, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Garcia got knocked out cold. Like, yikes. Um, next up, we had um, um, Song Wu Choi versus uh, Joshua Kuliabao. Uh, this is a really good fight. Um, Kuliabao is good. He's so fast. It was a real back and forth. I mean, it was a war, to be honest with you. Um, Kuliabao won by decision. I mean, that kind of probably... Uh, well, I, I want to say it could have went any, either way, but Kuliabao was definitely better on the feet. Um, next up, we had... Jack Della uh, Madalena versus uh, Ramazan Emiv. Um, Emiv had uh, 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 Madalena in this like crazy, I don't even remember what it was, some, some, some type of front choke that just was like so tight. I don't know how he got out. He just got out and then once we were back on the feet, he was landing these body shots like over and over again. And um, I, he might have beat him with strikes, but I'm pretty sure the body shots are what took um, Emiv down. Uh, he won by, and that was in the first round. Like once he got free from that submission, he just put it on him. Next up, you got Andre Fialo versus Jake Matthews. Andre Fialo, man, this is this dude's fourth fight in 2022. This guy's a madman, and I think it may have caught up to him. And Jake Matthews looked amazing. He looked like a, a movie character in the fight. Um, both guys were dropping bombs. Both guys were hitting each other really hard. But in the end, uh, Matthews was hitting Fialo a lot more than he was being hit and knocked him out in the second round. I mean, knocked him out cold. When Fiala woke up, I'm pretty sure he was trying to fight the referee a little bit. Like, he didn't know where he was. Um, but that's the only way you're going to beat that guy. 
Um, next up, we had a rematch of Wei Li Zhang versus Joanna Joanna John Jacek. Um, this was like one of the craziest fights ever. It was a dope, dope fight the first time. And to be honest with you, while this lasted, it was some of the same stuff. It was action packed from the moment it started. They were dropping bombs again. There was a lot more like grappling involved in this one because Wei Li had stepped her game up. She looked strong. She was roughhousing Joanna on the ground. But you know, Joanna is so slippery and so good. It was a good fight, man, but um, Wei Li knocked her out in the uh, second round. And to be quite frank with you, um, Joanna retired after this. And I, and I don't mean to say I'm glad she retired, but what I will say is that there was a time when she was the big, the boogie woman. And she was virtually unbeatable. And then she started being pretty and living her best life. And there's nothing wrong with that, but once that started, she's never really been the same killer in the ring, in the octagon, I should say. And I always, like, every time if I see her post on Instagram looking pretty, I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> that ain't training. T that ain't the way training camp look. But uh, I think retiring is good for her. I hope she goes into commentary because she has a brilliant mind when it comes to the sport. So I would like to hear her opinions and thoughts on some stuff. And, you know, she's real, like, she's brutally honest. So it'd be interesting to hear her, her ideas and thoughts on some of these other fighters. Um Next up, we had uh, Valentina Shunchek. Uh, what am I? <laughs> Valentina Shevchenko versus Talia Santos. Man, I was reading the name and just was like got mixed up because of it. It's, there's so many consonants in her name. It is crazy. It's like J D R Z J C Z Y K. Oh, that's uh, Jesse Alana's name, Shevchenko. Shevchenko's name is not that bad. Okay, I'm not, now, now I've got two kittens that are bothering me. They're just like me. Do something. Pick me up. Play with me. Look at me. But yeah, um, so yeah, Valentina versus Talia Santos. I mean, Talia Santos had a good game plan, and she seemed to be the bigger, stronger fighter. So on the ground, instead of Valentina manhandling like we normally see her do, that wasn't really the option. I mean, she did well, landed submissions, great, great striking. Even from like when Talia had her back, she landed some good shots on the feet. She was of course doing really well. There was a head bunt that messed up Talia's eye, and when that head bunt hit her eye, um, when that head bunt hit her, <laughs> when that when that head bunt hit her, like Talia's eye swelled up. And I mean, to be honest with you. I think Valentina kind of took advantage of that and started going for that side, knowing that she couldn't really see it coming from there. But it was a good fight. It was the closest fight Valentina's had, I've seen at least. Um, Valentina won by decision. Guess you got to beat the champ, right? There were boos. I don't know if the boos were warranted. It wasn't like she beat Valentina clearly. It was a good fight. Um, that one thing I noticed about the crowd in Singapore, they're really sophisticated. Like, they... They understood what was going on. They weren't just cheering for knockouts. They were cheering for, you know, submission attempts. They were cheering for submission um, um, escapes. They were cheering for, you know, takedowns. They just were, so, excuse me, they were just they were just a sophisticated crowd. And um, also, I noticed I don't know if this is because they were in Singapore, but they nor they had the normal um, crypto.com stuff everywhere. But they also kept talking about V Chain for the first time ever when they're over in Asia. Isn't that interesting? For anybody who knows anything about cryptos. But yeah, um, the main event, we had uh, Glover Tessera versus uh, Yuri Prohachka. It was a crazy fight. Yuri hurt Glover really bad. And uh, Glover took him down. And later Glover had Yuri hurt really bad. And was taking him down instead of finishing him. Um, and then what's crazy is it goes all five rounds. This grueling, grueling battle. The guys are—they're both in it, though. They're—they're they're warriors. They're smiling at each other. They're hugging and <laughs> fiving in between, mauling each other. And uh, I mean, at the last second, in the in the fifth round—not the last second, but I mean, maybe 30 seconds left in the fifth round. Yuri Yuri uh, gets the submission on uh, uh, Glover and wins the championship. Apparently, went home to like a hero's welcome, and it's dope. I don't know. How I feel about Yuri or Glover as the champion, to be honest with you. I mean, they're both really good fighters. They're top guys, of course, but I just don't feel like either one of them 
I didn't feel like it with Glover, and I don't feel like it with Yuri that he's going to be holding that belt for very long. And it's not necessarily a discredit to him. It's more of a credit to the strength of, you know, the other fighters in the division and just the way they match up. But we'll see, you know. Yuri is really unpredictable. He's tough as nails because Glover, that guy hurts you. So, you know, um, we'll see. Congrats to Yuri, to Yuri. Congrats to Valentina keeping her title. And, um, you know, uh, good luck, Ivana. Congrats on your retirement. It's well warranted. You're out there living your best life. Stop getting punched in the face. You don't need it. And I think that's it. We're about done. Um, if you're still here at this point, um, like, subscribe, uh, share all that good shit. Um, thank you for listening. I love you. Goodbye. Yeah.